Hello everyone. Very warm welcome to DMG Chemistry Classes. And from this video, I am going to start a new topic that is NMR spectroscopy. And the full form of NMR is Nuclear Magnetic Resonance. And as the name is indicating, this spectroscopy is based upon the magnetic property of the nucleus. And I will also explain this word resonance when I will discuss the theory and principle behind NMR spectroscopy. So keep watching my videos. So friends, in the introductory video of organic spectroscopy, I told you that the various types of spectroscopies like uh, UV, IR, NMR and mass spectrometry has emerged as a powerful tool for the identification and the structural determination of organic compounds. And I have discussed UV visible spectroscopy in my previous videos. And from this video, I am starting the NMR spectroscopy. And this nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy has been further divided into number of subfields depending upon the magnetic nucleus being studied or examined. And if we study the hydrogen nucleus in NMR spectroscopy, then the branch of this spectroscopy is called as proton magnetic resonance. And it is written like this 1H NMR. Okay? It is called as proton magnetic resonance because the hydrogen nucleus contains only one proton. Then we have carbon magnetic resonance and it is uh, expressed as 13C NMR where 13 is the mass number of carbon atom. Here 1 is the mass number of hydrogen or protium. Third one is fluorine magnetic resonance and it is written like this 19F NMR and finally we have phosphorus magnetic resonance and it is expressed as 13P NMR. So these are the various subfields of NMR spectroscopy. Now I am coming on to the theory and principle of NMR spectroscopy and first of all I am discussing the magnetic properties of the nuclei. Okay. So let us discuss the magnetic properties of the nuclei. So friends, just like that of electrons, nuclear particles that is protons and neutrons also spin about their axis. We know that the electron exhibits two types of motion that is it revolves around the nucleus which is called as orbital motion and at the same time it also spins about its own axis. Let us represent it diagrammatically and I am considering here the hydrogen atom which is having one proton in its nucleus and one electron is revolving around it. So <clears throat> this is nucleus and one electron a nucleus of hydrogen atom okay and and here we have the one electron is revolving around the nucleus. So this electron is revolving around the nucleus as well as it's also spinning about its own axis. Okay, what are the nuclear particles? Uh, protons and neutrons exhibit only spin motion. So they spin uh, about their axis. Okay, so here we have proton and this is axis of the proton and it can also spin about its own axis like this okay it can spin clockwise or anti-clockwise and neutron can also spin like this and the spin quantum number of these protons and neutrons is also equal to half just like that of electron so the spin quantum number spin quantum number of protons and neutrons is equal to half okay and if the protons and neutrons present in a nucleus are not paired then the nucleus will certainly have some resultant spin let us explain it with an example so I am taking the example of your deuterium 
and deuterium is represented like this that is 1 H2 okay and 1 is the atomic number of the deuterium and 2 is the mass number and we all know that atomic number tells us about the number of protons or we can say that atomic number is equal to the number of protons and we can calculate the number of protons by subtracting this atomic number from the mass number. So this deuterium nucleus will have one proton and one neutron. Now the resultant spin of the nucleus of deuterium will depend upon that how the spins of these two particles is arranged. If the spins of the two particles is anti-parallel that is they are paired then this nucleus will have zero resultant spin okay that is when the spin of proton and neutron uh, is are anti-parallel then the resultant spin will be plus half minus half equal to zero and if these two particles have parallel spins like this okay then the resultant spin will be equal to half plus half equal to one so it has been found experimentally that the resultant spin of the deuterium nucleus is equal to 1. Okay, let us take another example of helium nucleus <coughs> and helium nucleus is represented like this 2He4 where 2 is the atomic number and 4 is the mass number and this helium nucleus is having 2 protons and 2 neutrons. And experimentally it has been observed that the resultant nuclear spin of the helium nucleus is equal to zero. So when the resultant nuclear spin is equal to zero this means that these uh, nuclear particles protons and neutrons are having anti-parallel spin and or they are paired. So anti-parallel spins mean like this. Okay so the net spin will be equal to zero. So this means that the resultant spin of the nucleus depends upon the number of protons and neutrons having parallel and anti-parallel spins. Okay? And this resultant spin of the nucleus is expressed by the letter I or capital I. <coughs> so the resultant spin of the nucleus. resultant spin of the nucleus is represented by the capital letter I and it is also called as nuclear spin quantum number nuclear spin quantum number okay and we can have an idea about the nuclear spin quantum number or the resultant spin from the atomic number and the mass number. Okay, so let us explain it further. <clears throat> so here I am writing your mass number. Then here we have atomic number. <clears throat> and here we have your uh, nuclear spin quantum number nuclear spin quantum number i okay so if the mass number is odd and atomic number it can be even or odd then the resultant nuclear spin or the nuclear spin quantum number will have half integral values that is half 3 by 2 5 by 2 and so on okay and if the mass number is even if the mass number is even and this atomic number is also even then the nucleus will have zero nuclear spin quantum number and if 
the mass number is even and atomic number is odd then the nuclear spin quantum number will have integral values that is 1 2 3 and so on okay so now let us explain these rules with the help of some examples so according to this rule number 1 the protium that is 1h1 tritium that is 1h3 okay then 6c13 7 and 15 okay 9 fluorine 19 they all have resultant spin equal to half okay whereas your 5 b11 11 sodium 23 and uh, your 17 chlorine 35 they have your nuclear spin quantum number equal to 3 by 2 and whereas this year 18017 it is having resultant nuclear spin equal to 5 by 2 according to the this first rule okay and according to the second rule according to second rule your helium nucleus 2 he4 then we have this uh, 6 c12 then your 18 o 18 and these all are having even mass number and even atomic number so their nuclear spin quantum number will be equal to zero okay and these nuclei will be non-magnetic and i will explain it later on okay and according to this third rule is your deuterium that is 1h2 7 and 14 they have resultant spin equal to 1 and your this 5v10 it has nuclear spin quantum number equal to 3 okay and friends further a charged particle which is spinning about an axis produces a circular electric current and that circular electric current generates a magnetic dipole or a magnetic field so let us explain it diagrammatically so again here i am taking the example of your hydrogen nucleus and hydrogen nucleus is containing only one proton and that proton is a charged particle and proton have positive charge so here we have this hydrogen nucleus which is containing only one proton and when this charged particle proton it spins about its own axis then it will produce a circular current this proton is spinning about its own axis okay and this spin motion will give rise to a circular electric current like this and this circular electric current will produce a magnetic dipole or magnetic field this means that this spinning proton or spinning hydrogen nucleus will behave as a tiny magnet or a small bar magnet and that magnet will be placed along the axis of the spin okay so this proton will behave as what this proton will behave as a small bar magnet okay and this bar magnet will be placed along the axis around which the proton was spinning and we can easily predict okay we can easily predict the direction of this magnetic field with the help of right hand thumb rule okay 
and according to this rule this fingers tells us about the direction of the flow of the current and whereas the thumb tell us, uh, tells us about the direction of the magnetic field okay and the direction of the magnetic field is from so south to north so this is the direction of the magnetic field okay and friends with the help of the nuclear spin quantum number we can calculate the angular momentum of the nucleus and angular momentum of the nucleus angular momentum of the nucleus is equal to and it is represented by i prime and it is equal to under root i into i plus 1 into h upon 2 pi okay so this is the value of the angular momentum momentum of the nucleus so the nuclei which are having your zero resultant spin or zero value of nuclear spin quantum number will have zero angular momentum okay and from the value of this angular momentum we can calculate the magnetic moment of this magnet and the magnetic moment will be equal to so the magnetic moment of the magnet will be equal to q upon 2m into i prime so this i prime is what angular momentum so now i am substituting the value of i prime here then this magnetic moment will be equal to q upon 2m into under root i into i plus 1 into h upon 2 pi here this q is the charge of the spinning particle or and this m is the mass of the spinning charged particle okay and it will be further equal to q h upon 4 pi m into under root i into i plus 1 joule per tesla so this is the value of the nuclear magnetic moment okay and this value of mu it tells us about the strength of the magnetic field so as i told you that the nuclei which are having your zero nuclear spin quantum number will have zero angular momentum and then they will have zero magnetic moment also that's why the nuclei having zero resultant spin are non-magnetic and they will not be studied in the NMR spectroscopy. So only those nuclei will be studied in NMR spectroscopy which are having resultant nuclear spin then they will have resultant angular momentum and magnetic moment. Okay, so friends this concept that a spinning charge particle it give a spinning charge particle about an axis it give rise to a circular current and the circular current it give rise to what? A magnetic dipole or a magnetic moment or it gives rise to magnetic field so the nucleus of a particle uh, nucleus of an atom it behave as a small bar magnet is very important and it is the basis of the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy or NMR spectroscopy this is very important and this is uh, that's all in this video and I will keep this discussion on uh, in my upcoming videos and I will discuss this theory and principle of NMR spectroscopy further. So keep watching my videos, also like and share my videos and uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you very much.